Oh, he might be there. Back to him. There he is. Hooked up, guys. We're gonna have to go after this fish. All right, let's go. It's pulling. All right, guys, out of Stewart today, back and down. We're not sure what this is. Could be a barracuda. It's way up on high over here, Shush. up high. I'm just being telling you what's going on. We are at a spot where you catch a fish that I love to eat, but I don't really want to say it quite yet, just in case it is what I want. <laughs> I will say it either way after the catch. Bunch of boats are showing up, Brian's backing down on this fish. And we just caught that nice Spanish mackerel before, which was really cool. That was literally the first bait out. All right, getting close. Up on the surface, man, up on the surface. God, I hope he didn't just get picked up. Doesn't feel right. You sure? Looks like something grabbed it. Yeah. Or that's the fish. Can't pull. Gone. Oh. That wasn't the fish anymore. All right. That was something else. Got sharks. We got to have these drags up. Now we should have landed that fish. He was right by the boat the entire time. Ridiculous. No, oh, circle hook pulled. Circle hook pulled out. It's not that tight at all. I know. It's Feel not it. that tight. I know. Feel it. I believe you. I cranked it up myself, too. I know. All right, busy morning so far. We haven't been out in this big boat offshore in months, it seems. So we're a little out of, out of cahoots. But we've got some nice pilchards from the Stewart, from Stewart Live Bait. Supplies all your bait needs and the manatee pocket. And uh, we've got two baits out with uh, like 40 pound test fluoro, circle hooks. Again, they're big pilchards. We caught that Spanish again right away and then just had that big fish, whatever it was, it's got sharks. Hopefully it was just a barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> Not like Cobia we're looking for. But no one else is hooked up, so we're gonna sit here for a couple minutes and see what happens. Ready? Yeah. There he is. <laughs> fish on. All right. All right, but babe, I wait will. over there. We I got will. a line over there. I will. Not far out at all. You're all right. Come on, buddy. Get to the boat. Get to the boat. All right, we got a fish on. Fish on, baby. Ooh, big head shakes. Got the drag set a little tighter. Fish coming in a little good right now. You just keep reeling. Fish getting ahead of the boat. Whoa. Shit. What is this? Let's go, let's go. Holy, that might be a big king. You gotta go, babe. Holy crap, the head shakes are incredible. Rocking me. Holy smokes. Real. I you can, can, baby. Don't don't tighten it too much, I don't know. It's out already. Can't baby. Still pulling. Like the fish woke up when he saw the boat. Gotta be getting close. Don't see him yet. Broke. Oh. I don't know what that is. It's weird. Oh. Not acting like a Kobe at all. The sharks don't run like that. I had 50, more than 50 feet out. I'm still going. Everything, bro. He just cut the cut off, cut you off. Right. It's probably Maybe a king. it's a big king or kudo. It's probably a kingfish. Yeah. All right, well, whatever it is, what it is. I don't know what we're hooking. Nothing else we could have done. We did good. We did a good job. That was good. Yeah, we did a good job. That fish was down. That's the other thing. Like, cobia, those cobia come straight up. Right. Like, that fish was down. Yeah. Down, down, down. And All then right, when, well, he, when he saw the boat, he took off down. Yeah. All right, we're going to run out and see what we can find, and uh... When we get a hook on, we're done. All right, good. Okay. Nope. He's swimming at the boat. All right. Jeez, what is this ripping across the surface? Weird bites today. All right, we're on a wreck right now. Watch yourself. I got my line down. Darcy got get the top line. I was line. just getting rigged up, and yeah, the flat line went off. Always have a flat line out, guys. Always have a flat line. I always tell you that. Bonita. Yeah? I'll take it. We need a Bonita. Nice Bonita. Take him, these are strips. Yeah, he just put his head back under. 
Crap, crap, crap. Crap. Shit. Shit. I'm under the engine. Gosh, I'm a goo gun today. Come on, baby. I know, baby. Please. You just grab him for me, okay? Ready? Go, go. Nice job. Thank you. Woo! It's a nice one. It's tough with those little bonitos. You <laughs> land them so fast, they swim all under the boat and stuff. But I need that bait so bad, so I'm pretty excited about yeah, it. Yeah, it was great. I never get excited about bonita, but I'm excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that, that's what we catch you all our wahoo on. She's gonna cut that into strips. That's yeah, one of the best buddy. trolling baits you can make. Yes, we're almost out of baits. Yeah, so you want, and you also want to keep that. You're going to make it nice and iced down nice, like you're treating it like a real fish, because it's going to make your baits better. Too. Correct. Yeah, I think I'm even going to bleed them. Oh, I don't know if you don't need to do that, but... Well, there'll be less blood in the meat when I'm bleeding. That doesn't matter. You bleed them right there? Well, I don't want them in the bag. All right. Whatever. Show them. All right, I'm just taking my Smith knife, bait breaker, awesome little bait knife, and I'm just literally going to just break apart his gill plates really good. Just like so. Oh, and let them bleed out. That works. I put them in the well, but uh, we got baits in there. You don't want to mix fish blood with your baits. No. Hey, Brian, I you, fight, you fight it. All sure right, you Putin's got one. I got, I got, I got. Did you fight, did you try to drag it all? No, I did not touch the drag. I think you got it beneath it. I think so too. Woo! We will take the bait. Brian's got to fight some fish, get some exercise. Yeah, I do. I need it. I consider her fishing exercise, but Brian it's doesn't. It's not. Whoa, watch my line. Just try to. Let me get on this. Oh, I can't. I'm gonna whoop them much Let faster me know than you anyway. Gap them or whatever. I don't think. Whoop so. them, Brian. Whoop them. It's ahead of the boat. Mine's out in the back on the other side. Get them off the boat. Down low, down low. Oh, I broke off. No, he didn't. He didn't. Get him, Brian. Up. Whoa, big bonita. Watch the engine. I'm telling you, that's what they do at the end right here. Let me get his head. All right. Holy. Oh, it's a nice one. Woo! All right, let me fish my bait. <laughs> yeah, fish your bait, fish your bait. All right, so it came out deeper to about 178, and our live well stopped working. Boo! That's fishing. So I spent 80 that's bucks boating. on live baits and probably that's, dying. That's boating. That's boating, fishing and boating. And uh, the current's moving four knots out here, so you can't really bottom fish or drift or wreck very effectively. Um, so we're going to go in closer to the shore where the current is usually less. All right, guys, your change spots came in shallower. I don't know nice, what Brian. I didn't have enough drag. I don't smoking think. You. He's smoking you over there. Thirty pound. I dropped down a 30-pound leader. I got a little more drag. I get him up. All right, he's coming. Come up right now. You ready? Get back. I'm coming. 20-foot leader. Straight up and down. Mutt. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're wrapped on my line too. Cut the engine. No, it's fine. My line is wrapped. All right. Cut the engine. Give right. me, give me, give me. Who's that chasing? Big Kobe? AJ. Big AJ. It's another AJ. Let go. Hold up. I got it. <laughs> nice. <sighs> Woohoo! That fish smoked you. All right, so what Brian did was drop the leader and make it less, lighter leader, and that got the bite. So that's what we have to do to all our lines right now. Nice fish. Is he a keeper? Yeah. He's got, what's he got to be, 28? 28, two to the fork, 31 to the fork. All right, hold up your fish. Oh. State, Atlantic State and Federal, minimum of 28 fork length. Yeah, he's 31. Open year round. He's 31. All right. Sure. Ooh, you got, really got to check your regs on these things because the Gulf is different than the Atlantic. Yeah. And the state and federal, so it's like a whole thing. So well, you I want guess, me to pick up your fish? Yeah, you go ahead. I guess in the Gulf, it's 34 inches to the fork. And here in Atlantic, it's 28, so. All right. Honestly, the sun. All right, guys. So honestly, this is like the best eating size amberjack. Just over, you know, the recommended... Just over the legal size limit in order to keep. And you can see how pretty that fish is. He's gonna be tasty. And uh, honestly, there's probably gonna be no worms in him just because he's a younger, smaller fish. But they get huge, 80, 100 pounds, reef jonkies. Nice. That fish put up a nice fight. Yeah, he did. He? I wasn't used to it. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and bleed him. Yeah, let's bleed him. Box. Nice, all right. Sweet. All right, guys, back at the house. Yep, yep. 
get our fish done. So we're trying to catch a cobia, and there was cobia everywhere. Everywhere. And sharks, and tons of cobia, but they weren't biting because the current had died where the cobia were. It was terrible. They were big cobes. This was really cool to see. They literally looked like mini sharks. It was super cool. So we're gonna eat this amberjack. Nice and fresh. I'm gonna put it on the barbecue, I think. Barbecue? Yeah, I think do, the barbecue. I feel like we always do barbecue in the amberjack. Well, it's good on the barbecue. What else are you gonna do? Why wouldn't, everything's good on the barbecue. It's not a bad day. I, I felt like, I felt kind of like we were really rusty. Yeah, we are rusty as heck. <laughs> for sure. Like we literally still have like rods that are ready for like alligator hunting and that like ended in like yeah. November. And you can see right here actually, this fish has even got like, he's got stuff attached to him, parasites. Look at this, see that? Yeah. See that? Like all fish have parasites, believe it or not. Like people don't seem to think, you know, with mahi or even with snapper, there's all some type of parasite that, you know, coexists with all fish species. It's just how it goes. Just some um, fish have more parasites than others. Yeah, and some of them are more noticeable, if, like naked, like visible to the human eye compared to other ones. So that's why a lot of people get freaked out when they see those worms, those long stringy white worms in uh, amberjacks. Right. Um, so I want to quickly just mention too, really fast, Easter is approaching and we have a sale going on on my website, darsizzleoffshore.com. You guys constantly ask me, you know, about the fish hook and anchor bracelets, particularly the sterling silver pendants that I have. I have a wide range of nautical pendants available on my website, all different kinds of fish species. Um, so check it out. Everything is 20% off with code EASTER20. We'll link that down below. And then by the time you guys see this, just know that you're not gonna get it in time for Easter. So if you do place an order, I appreciate it, but just keep that in mind. Um, but we have been posting it on other platforms. You probably saw if you guys follow us. And if you're on the email list, you would have seen it. Yes. You have an email list. We got That's an email the, list. Link the, link the video. Look Lots in the of good blow. stuff going on. <laughs> I blood this fish, and this meat looks amazing. Holy cow. Will it have worms, or will it not have worms? I don't know. Usually, there's tail. There's always worms in the back half of the tail area. Always on amberjacks. But so far. Don't see any. Hold your breath. So I feel like this too. fish is a little, like, he's just a little on the skinny side. Like Like me? <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little on the skinny side, and maybe that's why, I don't know, maybe it's like a migrating fish, but look at this meat. Like pure white, I don't see a single worm. Usually you'll start to see the worms all back in here. Well, it's definitely back a bigger there. fish too. The bigger no. fish. Yes, but also like right here you would see it in through yes. the cavities and everything. And you can't. There's no worms in here. That's a worm. <laughs> Book too soon. Yes, that's a worm. Uh, actually, that might be part of his. Yeah. All these connections. Anyhow, anyway. I think there's no worms in this fish. Wow, it is super bright out here. Yeah. So it just goes to show you guys that. The smaller the fish, you know, he hasn't been in the water as long for things to get attached to him and things to grow inside his body and all that gross stuff, right. uh, particularly with the AJs. But this size fish is just a perfect eating size fish. And now we just switch to the eight inch Darcy's little fillet knife. That's always linked down below, guys, when I use my knives. So if you want to see those, check that out as well. And I'm going to keep the knife up a little bit because there is a bloodline right along that skin. You see that? Look at all that red red meat. So just keep it up a tad. Sharpen these knives real good before I came out to flay this fish. People always ask about sharpening. So how often do you sharpen your knives? Quite a bit. Yeah, like every fish, right? Or every, um, every time. Depending you... on ty the type of fish it is, but I'm always sharpening these blades about like every two, three fish on average. Uh, you have to because that's how you keep your edge sharp. Yeah. I mean, any professional fishmonger or any person that works with knives, like a sushi, what do you call sushi chef? Yeah. There's all different types of names. They'll tell you that they're always sharpening their knives. I mean, right. it's just it's just part of the game. You you know, I can't go through a dozen fish and not sharpen it. It'll be dull by the end of that. Yeah, you you know, sharp tool is a good tool, and you're all, I mean, when you do fish, you're also hitting like bones and all kinds of things, so, you know, the knife gets all yes, up. Yes, yes. Luckily, with this fish, there's not a whole lot of scales. There's not a whole right. lot of bones. But you can see how sharp that blade is. I could just cut, like, right through that thin layer of red meat and knock it right out. And that's, like, sushi grade right there. Nice and thin. Nice. All right, but look at that. That is gorgeous. There is no worms in this amberjack. I am, like, 
95% sure. You would be seeing worms all through well, here. Well, it looks nice. Look at this knee. It looks so good. Yeah, it looks delicious. It's going to be so great. so spoiled. So spoiled down here in South Florida. Living the dream, guys. That's for sure. I'm always like wanting to catch more fish, but we had a great day on the water. Yeah. Not, you know, not too bad for us. First time back out in a long time. So yeah. we can only get better from here. Yeah, you know, also the boat had just got serviced. Yeah, yes. been a while, so we looked like 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 a shakedown cruise. Right. Not get too crazy, not drive 200 miles offshore. <laughs> yeah, and we found out our bilge pump's broken. Yeah, so there you go. So there you go. The shakedown cruise worked Check out. out. That. Nothing too terrible, but I mean, hopefully we get it fixed sooner rather than later. So Ryan's becoming a mechanic right now. So much fun. All right, let's get let's get these guys to the eating part. You're boring them to death. Sorry. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. See you outside. Inside. Thanks for cleaning those amberjack star sizzle and welcome back guys to another episode of cooking with pudding your favorite part of the show today we're cooking that amberjack up nice of course and i'm going to do a barbecue i got i already got broccoli cooked that came out too early i got yellow rice and i got the beautiful amberjack here come a little closer to sizzle now the amberjack steaks some of them were very thick and actually this meat just looks delicious so i like to cut them in equal sizes that's going to do two things one is going to make them cook evenly and number two I am going to be uh, coating them or marinating them in some barbecue sauce, just to pick your barbecue sauce that you love the most. And so a little bit thinner pieces is going to give it more flavor and more surface area for the barbecue sauce to adhere to, right? Make it a little more juicy. You just got to make sure you don't overcook it, okay? Um, I don't like fish to be a over like two, two inches or one and a half inches or something like that. So I got the barbecue heating up outside. And this is very simple. I also got some salt and pepper on here. But this is really one of my favorite ways to eat amberjack. And, you know, some people poo-poo on amberjack because sometimes it has worms. And as you saw, this really had no worms. And it's really a delicious fish. Nice and white. You can barbecue it. You can put it in a pan. It's, it's sort of a medium to firm, delicious white fish. Uh, you know, and you can, like, even put it over a salad or over some rice or something. And again, like I said, we do have some white rice. So pretty exciting. But let's get right to it. Oh, I also wanted to say we caught those bonitos. Now, we haven't been out in the ocean in quite a while, but you guys have to stay tuned for the next video. Darcy made some delicious bait strips with those bonitas, which we've been waiting to catch because we're running low on bonita strips, and we caught three wahoo the in the hell? next video on those what? strips. So this is almost like a companion video to that. Uh, we caught the bonitas. We made the bait. We caught some awesome fish. So stay tuned for that, but let's get right to the barbecue. All right, that was quick. Got the food. This is my brand new barbecue grill. Thanks. <laughs> Nobody. Thanks, your tenant. Yes, I don't want to tell you the story. We actually got this, found this at one of my tenants' places, like 15 years ago. I evicted them, and they left the barbecue. And I've been using it ever since. All right, not that exciting. Just putting the meat on the grill. We'll be back in a minute. Maybe two or three minutes. You don't want to overcook fish. You don't want to show the people Which any of flower? your flowers. Which flowers? See, look, there it is. So red. <gasps> show that you're red berry. So right here, waiting for the fish to cook. And Darcy's showing a little bit of her gardens. I said, figure to show you. So that's a miracle berry. Yes. They're very tasty. You put that in your mouth and it makes everything taste sweet. Well, show them your, what else you got? Lilies? This is the Lilies. ghetto garden, as I call it. Not lilies, orchids. Yeah, I've got all kinds of orchids in baskets and stuff. I was just showing Brian, not that he cares, but. I've cared so much I put it on the video. No. This is another orchid my aunt gave me. There's like a new growth right here coming up. It hasn't flowered yet, another growth and a new growth right there. New pseudobulbs is what they're called on orchids. Show us the phones of flowers. Yeah, this is, a, this is a coconut orchid, also known as a Maxa, Maxarilia, I forget the true name, but coconut orchid because their flowers are supposed to smell like coconuts. And this one I just got as a gift from Aunt Cece. If she sees this, thank you. But um, yeah, hers is flowering. She just gave it to me about a month ago and that's the coconut orchid and it has like a super light fragrance. So I'm kind of like waiting on this one to start flowering. Nice. But, yeah, got a lot. Got, got a lot, lot of stuff. And stuff. So right here we got roses. Lots of roses. And the boats. I'm, I don't want to bore these people too much, but no. you can see Darcy's pineapple you garden. See my giant pineapples over here. Show us how they're growing. That's what they want to see. Yes. Look at this, guys. We've got all different levels of plants. Crazy. Yeah. This so is this is what Dar this is Darcy's other habit, other yeah. habit or hobby besides fishing. Yeah. This is called the red heart stage because it's almost done flowering. You can see the last row of flowers at the top, and then it's going to form into what those look like behind it. Like that. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm excited. This <laughs> one's going to be a huge, huge pineapple. Yeah. 
It's got a long way to go still. How many and pineapples you got out here can today? You see, like right here, are all the babies popping up? Oh yeah. One, so those two, those are the new three. plants. Yeah. Like usually you hear about, you can go to the store and plant a plant. Yep. But those are, you can kick those off too. Yep. New plants growing on all of them. Yeah. So yeah, pretty cool. That's a medicine plant right here. Oh, aloe. Like my vat, aloe plant. My my uh, stuff's what? all messed up. My uh, there we go. Aloe plant. Yep. Herbs, herbs. A little tomato plant. Yep. <laughs> oh look, this flower. We gotta get the, we gotta check the fish. We gotta check the fish. We gotta cut. We got this. pretty. We got pretty. Cut this and bring it in the house. Oh, That's gorge. Nice. Gorge, and we're up there. Look how tall this rose bush is. Freaking nuts. <laughs> yeah. All right, in a container. All right, it's been too long because we're out playing in the garden. You can see these are white on the top, which is bad. We can have a plate, baby. No, but I got nice grill marks on there. I got a little stuck. These are, see, that, see how white that is already? That's already done. I think a lot of these are done already because they're waiting too long. It's done, see, it's already flaking. Look at that, Chisel. See flaking? Flaking, I mean, these are done. You caught it in the right time. It's not, I mean, it's not overdone. Lucky. All right, guys. I just went right to the plating of the food, and as I mentioned before, we just had a nice hand full of broccoli, some delicious yellow rice, and a nice small plate for diet pump pudding, and of course the delicious fish. Dive into our sizzle, <coughs> wash it down with our favorite beverage. I just spilled some on there. Again, the key is, guys, while Dolly's tasting this, don't overcook it. I, I know I keep saying it, but it's so epic. This cooked for four minutes and it's almost overcooked. That's the key to success with the all fish. All fish. What do you think, Sizzle? Good. That's all? Just good? Mm hmm. It's not you delicious. Can't beat it. It's amberjack, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, and here we like to specialize in, in super healthy and, and fairly simple recipes. We think that's what most of you guys are doing at home. So, again, you can also do this with uh, Italian dressing. Super easy on all kinds of fish. Whatever kind of marinade you want. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. So until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep on catching. catching. And make sure you stay tuned for the next video. Turn on your notifications. Yes, don't miss it.